The FA Cup has had a number of surprise winners. From 2nd Division Sunderland defeating Leeds to win the Cup in 1973, to Wigan winning it in 2013, there have been many great underdog tales. But one of the most unique underdog stories in the history of the tournament occurred all the way back in 1901. Tottenham Hotspur of the Southern League managed to reach the FA Cup final and went on to achieve a feat that we will never see again. This is a story of 1901, the year a non-league side won the FA Cup. Tottenham Hotspur were founded in 1882. They turned professional in 1995 and were admitted to Division 1 of the Southern League the next year. They would win the Southern League to seal their first trophy in the 89-90 campaign. As a result, they would not have to partake in the FA Cup qualifiers the next season and were admitted straight into the first round. The first round of the FA Cup had been postponed due to the death of Queen Victoria. Tottenham would eventually play their first round fixture in February, where they would face Preston North End. Preston were in the first division and had knocked Tottenham out of the competition at the same stage the previous season. It seemed as though it would be a routine win when Preston took the lead in the first half, but Sandy Brown would level the scores nine minutes from time to send the game into a replay. Both David Copeland and John Jones had returned from injury to give Tottenham a massive boost for their trip to Deepdale. Player manager John Cameron gave Spurs the lead, and Sandy Brown would net twice before half-time. Preston would get one back, but Brown would then get his hat-trick before Preston netted a consolation. Tottenham had defeated the top flight side 4-2 and were through to the second round. Their next opposition would be even tougher, as they were facing the holders of the FA Cup, Berry. Berry took an early lead at White Hart Lane and continued to pile on the pressure as they looked for a second goal. But on the half-hour mark, completely against the run of play, Sandy Brown would level the scores. The goal gave Spurs a confidence boost, and in the second half, they dominated the game. Sandy Brown would net his second, and in doing so, he sent Tottenham through to the next round. Spurs had enacted two huge upsets, but their next tie would be somewhat easier. They were drawn against Reading in the third round. Reading were the only other non-league side remaining in the tournament. The tie at Reading would finish in a 1-1 draw, with a goal from John Kerwin keeping Tottenham in the game. The replay at White Hart Lane was straightforward, with a goal from David Copeland and two from Sandy Brown sending Tottenham into the semi-finals. They would face West Brom, and people were starting to wonder if it would be Tottenham's year. Their semi-final against West Brom would take place at Villa Park, and thousands of Tottenham fans would make the journey to Birmingham. Whilst the tie was close to home for West Brom, to the untrained eye, it would seem as though they were the non-league team. Sandy Brown's incredible form continued as the Scotsman netted all four goals as Spurs ran out as 4-0 winners. He had now scored an incredible 12 goals in the tournament in their run to the final. Tottenham Hotspur would face Sheffield United in the FA Cup final for a chance to make history. Sheffield United were members of the first division and had won the FA Cup two years previously. Whilst Tottenham had performed giant killings, nobody expected them to take the trophy home. Over 110,000 people would attend Crystal Palace in London to see the final. Sheffield United took the lead after 10 minutes, but 13 minutes later, Sandy Brown headed the ball in to level the scores. He had now netted in every round of the tournament. Five minutes after half-time, Brown would net again to put Tottenham into a shock lead. Only moments later, the Blades would level the scores in bizarre circumstances. Reportedly, Tottenham goalkeeper George Clawley fumbled the ball, but then spun around to clear it away. The linesman signalled a corner, but the referee awarded a goal kick, as he felt it had come off a Sheffield United forward. Before the goal kick could be taken though, the referee changed his mind and awarded a goal. It was a confusing and controversial incident, and whether referee Arthur Kingscott gave the correct decision or not will forever remain a mystery. The game finished 2-2, and as a result, the 1901 FA Cup would be decided via a replay. The replay took place a week later at Burnden Park, the home of Bolton Wanderers. This time, only around 20,000 spectators were in attendance, as the railway companies refused to reduce prices for the fans. 
Sheffield United would take the lead five minutes before half-time. Tottenham was struggling and had to work extremely hard to make sure they didn't fall further behind. But after half-time, momentum swung in favour of Spurs, and John Cameron led by example by equalising in the 52nd minute. They had a couple of chances to take the lead through Sandy Brown, but William Folk would be on hand both times. But 15 minutes from time, Tom Smith scored to put Tottenham in front. And in the 87th minute, Sandy Brown would net his 15th goal of the tournament to seal the FA Cup for Tottenham. The final whistle soon went, and joyous Tottenham fans invaded the pitch. Against all the odds, a non-league side had won the FA Cup, knocking out mighty opposition time and time again, and making history. Captain Jack Jones would lift the trophy, which was adorned with blue and white ribbons. It was the first ever time the FA Cup would have ribbons attached to it, and it is a tradition that remains to this day. Tottenham's players would return to London at 1am the next morning, where fans who had been waiting for hours received them with open arms, and they paraded the trophy back to White Hart Lane. Tottenham's first FA Cup win is perhaps the most unlikely victory in FA Cup history. The idea of a non-league side winning the FA Cup is imponderable now, and it is something that has never happened since. Their victory was no fluke, as they knocked out great teams along the way, with their opponents being full of first division sides, including the holders. It is an incredible underdog story that does not get the attention it deserves, perhaps because of Tottenham's success in the FA Cup since. But it was one of football's first miracles, the likes of which we will never see again. <laughs>